Hi there. I wanted to show you the economic um, threshold table for economic nexus that I have been using and referring to for my clients and then um, one that I have been directed to by a couple other professionals. This is one that is very easy to find. Um, it's through the company Sovos. This is one of the tax products um, that you can use to help you determine whether or not um, you need to file in a certain state and then also um, they have products that will seek directly with your uh, sales platform so if you're looking for something you can definitely check them out they have they have solutions for larger businesses and smaller businesses but they keep this up-to-date list of all the different thresholds that each state is putting into action <clears throat> and the interesting thing is as I started looking into this issue I have noticed changes in this table so they are keeping it up to date things are changing all the time um, but I wanted to show it to you so you can see the um, the address here is Sovos uh, slash mandate slash South Dakota versus wafer economic nexus threshold table so you can look that up um, I will also put a link wherever this video is so that it can easily be found but what you do is you just scroll down and I just want to explain it so very simply it has you know you can look up which states you're specifically looking for they put it nice and handy in alphabetical order and then they have the ruling in the state that has set out the thresholds so Wayfair versus South Dakota set a minimum threshold so they can't go any lower than that and that is 200 transactions or $100,000 in revenue. So you'll see that some states are doing things differently. <clears throat> so for example, Alabama, they don't have a transaction threshold count. They only have a revenue threshold and theirs is significantly higher than the uh, what Wayfair set out. And when I say Wayfair, I mean the actual court decision, not the company, because <laughs> they would not have done that. Um, and then this is telling you what, what period you actually need to look at to determine whether you need to start collecting prospectively. And then it also shows the effective date um, when that ruling went into, went into effect. And then you can go in here to more details. And this can be a really helpful um, a really helpful tool because it can it will go into details for the actual state I think this is going to um, kick me out of this screen if I try to do that but you can click on this more details and there can be a lot of helpful information there and sometimes it's even linking you back to the Department of Revenue in the individual state so definitely go down that rabbit trail if you are trying to um, get some more information so you'll see Arizona has something a little bit more complicated. So they're actually to, um, working people up to the $100,000 threshold. So that's kind of interesting. So for the first year, $200,000 is the threshold, then $150,000, then $100,000, kind of giving people time to get on board, which I actually think is um, pretty nice. Um, you'll also notice this word or here. So this is where you really need to see, do they have 200 transactions or $100,000? So that means you could potentially be selling items that are only five to $10 a piece, but if you sell more than 200 of them, you could be triggering that in Arkansas. So if you sell 300 units in Arkansas, that means technically you have um, triggered that economic nexus. And then, so California is an interesting one. They don't have a number of transaction limitation. They only have a revenue one, and that one is actually pretty high at 500,000. I wanna say that California is one of the highest. Um, and then you'll see a couple states have this and word here. And this is one that I'd really like to see more states move to. You need to have 200 transactions and over $250,000 of revenue. So this would really be helping the, um, the type of business that has a really high, uh, a really high dollar value um, per unit transaction. So say you were selling something that was $20,000 a piece, you would pretty quickly reach this 250 threshold 
but it would take you quite a while to reach the 200, like the number of transactions at 200, especially if you're just looking at one state. So um, they could totally go back on their, <laughs> on their promise here, but I think that this is kind of an interesting one. And then you'll see lots of states have, have gone to this 200 or $100,000 option. There's also something called the Streamline Tax. I forget if they call themselves an alliance. But there's a group of states. I think there's 24 that are actively participating now. And it allows you to register with all of them at the same time because they all have basically streamlined their processes so that essentially they are on the same thresholds and hopefully reporting will be a lot easier to those states. So yet to be determined on exactly how all of that is working. I haven't gone through it myself yet with those streamlined states, but <clears throat> um, that is in efforts to try to make the whole process easier for the remote sellers. Um, so you'll see a lot of those at the 200 or 100,000. And this again is that minimum base amount from the, that was determined from the Wayfair decision. Here's another one where we see an and, so 100, 100 transactions and $500,000. We like those ands in this situation, not the ors. <laughs> um, and so let's see here. There's a couple other ones that are looking a little bit interesting. This says $10,000 for Pennsylvania, so I'm not sure how they're doing that. Maybe this is a, this might be a state that has um, maybe a lot of exclusions to their sales tax products, like what is taxable and what is not. Uh, so the, essentially, this is the list. Look at it. You can download it into Excel, which is pretty handy. And just keep checking it because this is changing really rapidly. But if you were to, say, run a report out of your Shopify system or something um, and you were curious as to what the rules were, like if you've triggered one or two states, you could come in here and look and see um, what your limits are looking like and then also what the effective date is for that. So um, I hope that's helpful. Definitely find this. I found this this chart to be one of the easiest to read, uh, read and the most clear. So hopefully this is helpful to you as well. All right. Thank you.